Now we're delighted to have with us in the studio sports broadcaster Aidan McGee and showbiz journalist Hayley Palmer. Welcome, team. Good to see Thank you. Thank you, team. Aidan, we'll start with you. Ryder Cup, what's happening in the golf? The Europeans are running away with it, aren't they? They are, indeed. I mean, so they made a great start yesterday. They were 4-0 up early. They finished last night 6.5 points against 1.5 points. We've not seen form like this from a European team in many years. Remember, two years ago at Whistling Straits, they were wiped out in front of no crowd whatsoever. I'll tell you something, my brother's there watching at the moment. He said the difference here is that the crowd are raucous. They're right on top of the players, and that benefits the home players as well. And they've carried on that magnificent form this morning. They're now 9.5 against two and a half for the USA. Implosion within the U US camp as well. St all sorts of stories coming out of there this morning about players not getting on with each other, disagreements and fractures within the camp. And this whole McElroy and Fleetwood thing. What do you reckon McElroy and Fleetwood are called? Oh, no idea. Fleetwood, <laughs> Fleet, Fleetwood Mac. Oh. And of course, no, they are, seriously. They, and, this, and at the moment, they're everywhere. Honestly. <laughs> I never know whether it's a joke or not with it. <laughs> Hayley, what's happening in the world of showbiz? Well, Get some sanity back to this. Yeah, I was going to say. Well, showbiz. <laughs> really yeah. Yeah. showbiz. Well, no, this is good news because Dance and the Nice is coming back and they're teasing the new contestants who it's going to be. So, news in. Claire Sweeney, who's just gone into Corrie, she's going to be taking part. Uh, Hannah from S Club, she's not going on the tour, but she's going to be on the ice. Mm. What about that? Uh, also, Ricky Hatton, MBE, who's the boxer. Amber Davies, who's from, from Love Island, uh, who's now a West End star. And uh, Greg Rutherford as well, who's an Olympian. And I do think the sports people have got that advantage. They've got that... That might Ricky Hatton. It, haven't Ricky, they? It's not yeah. just that. Ricky, Ricky Hatton, who would, as a boxer, would have to work very strongly and very swiftly on his footwork because as he manoeuvres around the ring, it's so, so important now. It's probably, especially in his generation. It's true. Okay, I'm going to ask that. Do you think a boxer would be better on the ice or a ballet dancer? Because there's a lot of grace and balance. Yes. You've got to have the grace. Definitely a ballet dancer. But I think with any athlete, they have that mindset of they just work really hard. They know they've got... Oh, determined. All... Yeah. So they always <laughs> do well on Strictly and Dancing on Ice. But if I was on there, I want to do... Is it the headbanger? You know when they... <laughs> They swing you yeah, around. Yeah, <laughs> you'd love it, Phil. Really? Yeah. yeah. Different for a boxer. They're, they're obviously operating on moving around on canvas, as opposed. So to... So Haley likes head banging. <laughs> we did not get Harry Redknapp on the dancing at ice. We were talking to him earlier about his first game as manager. He lost nine nil, and he reckons it's because his team were all sliding about on the ice and couldn't couldn't perform. Uh, oh. <laughs> that was his excuse. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, this we're on about boxing. What the, I was reading about some huge numbers for a fight between Fury and Usyk in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Yeah, so this is what they've been waiting for. Earlier in the year, around about March, they pulled away from negotiations. That fight, if it had happened, would, would have been worth about £100 million taking place at Wembley. They're waiting for the Saudi season in Riyadh, 26,000 crowd. Not as big as you get at Wembley, but the numbers just tell uh, Phil, to be honest with you, £150 million this person is going to be worth. We're not actually sure of the split, and we think it's going to take place on December the 23rd. However, Tyson Fury on, April, on uh, October the 28th has a fight against, uh, against an MMI, MMA fighter, which he has to come through. It's believed to be a formality. I think it will happen. But the latest this fight can happen with Usyk is against March. This will be... Phil, the biggest heavyweight fight of the 21st century. If Fury wins, That's it cements big. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the biggest fight, though, might be taking place in Big Brother, might it? That's yeah, what I am buzzing for this, Phil, because I know people say, oh, no, Big Brother, but I just love people watching. So for me, I think it's very educational to see how people bond or fight. It's going to be brilliant. Now, I hope they've got some good contestants. They haven't revealed anyone yet. I hope they're not influencers and just boring people. Is it a celebrity one? Or is it's, it? No, it's not celebrity, but I hope they get good people in there, like characters in there. Like, we want to see drama. We don't want to see everyone yeah, getting so on. Episode one, they had something, you know, someone like who had been a nun and then somebody who was like a brickie and somebody, you know... Normal all people. Yeah, but... but it ended up being a freak show, though, but, didn't it? Yeah, it does. No, but somebody who's got, I guess, it's conversation points, somebody who can bring you an opposite point of view, and that's what you're looking for, not like a bunch of influencers who are just sort of that, posing and yeah, just photos. Exactly, yeah, I totally agree. We want characters in there, so... I won't be going in, don't worry, even though I would bring some character to that, to that house. Uh, but Will uh, Bess and AJ Odudu are the presenters this year. It used to be uh, Emma or Ryland. They're not doing it this year, so I'm a bit disappointed. Big but I, th I thought it was Davina McCall. Yeah, it used to be. It, it, Davina, day, yeah, 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 it was Davina yeah. in the day as well. See, yeah, you do like it really, but Phil. Do you remember the, early, remember the early contestants? It was like Alex Sibley, Kate Lawler. Oh, they were the uh, good old days. Uh, what's his name? Yeah. No, he's, what's, he was, no, uh, Nick Bateman, do you remember him? Oh, yeah. But brilliant. they were quite normal people by comparison to what you get today. Yeah. Was that a fair comment? Um, 
I mean, Craig, it worked, the didn't it? Bricky, it worked. It? Yeah, it was, it, we knew nothing like it. So um, anyway, Sunday, nine o'clock. You can uh, check that out. They've also got a spin-off show uh, as well. It's called Late and Live. You can watch that. <laughs> it was looking at me like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Bill, you're going to love it. Bill. Bill, I'm afraid we'll be watching either the football oh, here we go. or the horse racing. Or the boxing, it certainly won't be Big Brother. Sport. Way. I'll be watching it, the sport. You'll be watching sport. Exactly. Um, Liverpool and Tottenham. Exactly, Harry yeah. Redknapp five predicted a draw, I think. Well, I think, we... funnily enough, that was Harry Redknapp's first game in charge when he took over at Tottenham in 2008. And it was a statement victory because it, he did, his side didn't really look back after that. But yeah, today, different different set of circumstances all these years later. 5 30 kickoff. They're both flying, aren't they? Yeah, they are doing very well. And Tottenham are very, looking very, un, very, very attractive and very easy on the eye under Ange Postacoglu. And last week, they showed a little bit of resilience as well. They've trailed twice against, uh, against Arsenal, pulled it back at a ground where they don't get too many results. Did you see that Haley was snuggling in there next to, to Wade, just moving along? <laughs> so just I tried to do it really in. gracefully. <laughs> the very circus. Did it as well? As we got Martin in, because Martin's got a cracking show and it's coming up next. Do you want to tell us your highlights? Yeah, so it's a debate special today. Knife crime after another tragic stabbing in Croydon. How do we tackle this? And we need to talk about ethnicity. Suella. Who can blame her for turning away the Archbishop of Wokery, Justine Welby? All it'd do is have a pop. Well, I was with Justin for most of uh, yesterday. Oh, yeah. I was at a Eucharist. A friend was being made a bishop, so I was with him for two hours yesterday. You like him, but Suella <laughs> has blanked oh, I never said that. Uh -huh. yeah. I never said that. <laughs> and, of course, North Sea Oil, it's time to start drilling. We cannot continue importing 20 billion quid's worth of gas when the future is beneath our feet. We've got that and much more. It's going to be juicy. Sounds fantastic. Yeah, it'll be lively as ever. Thank you very much. Indeed. Our show was super lively today, wasn't it? Was. it? it oh, honest, honest to goodness. And there was a little poll we had here, if I can get it up on my phone. It was about inheritance enough. tax. Should we abolish it? Should we keep it? 54% said abolish it. 46% said I agree. Keep get it. Sure. So it's very tight. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much to Aidan and Hayley and to all of our guests and for you for watching. And stay tuned to Martin Daubney. Mm.